And to start off our 3.30 games, we got seven of them we're going to cover. And then at 4 o'clock, we got a massive window of 3.30 games that are going to have playoff implications. Only six of them are going to have playoff implications of the seven that I'm going to talk about, right? But there's going to be eight games, eight games going on at the same time from the 3 o'clock start from the Cal-Utah game to the 4 o'clock start in the Wisconsin-Iowa game. There's going to be eight games on television and it's going to have playoff implications. Are they phenomenal football games? No. But we'll start with the first one, 330 by UMass, who's 1-6, and six, traveling to number 6, Penn State, who's 5-0. and oh. Penn State favored by 41.5 points in the Big Ten Network. Again, this is one of those ones I'm thinking about, talking, I was talking about not being an awesome football game. There's underrated football games. I think games that could be interesting. Um, but there, uh, there's one, obviously, in the 330 window that I'm going to talk about next. Carlos Davis for the Minutemen has gone 62-101, thrown for 886 yards, 6 touchdowns, 3 interceptions. K. Ron Lynch-Adams had 130 carries for 661 yards and 6 touchdowns. And Anthony Simpson had 33 catches for 586 yards and 3 touchdowns. Drew Aller for the Nittany Lions has gone 102-158, thrown for 1,092 yards, 9 touchdowns, 0 interceptions. K. Tron Allen had 69 carries for 307 yards and 2 touchdowns. And Keandre lambert Smith had 25 catches for 372 yards and 3 touchdowns. Penn State's 1-0 against the Minutemen all-time. They played in 2014, and Penn State won 48-7 at home. Uh, they didn't cover last time if it was this spread, but UMass isn't a good football team. UMass is arguably one of the worst FBS teams in the entire nation. UMass is not playing good football right now. Penn State is, and they're coming off a bye, and I guess, to be honest, they didn't play their best football at Northwestern, but you didn't really have to to beat Northwestern. It's still Northwestern. It is not a great football team. Um, and I'm going to be honest, this schedule sets up really nice for Penn State to beat Ohio State next week, right? Ohio State had to deal with a tough test from Maryland last week, and Purdue's not just going to let them run over them. If this game goes how I expect it to go, Penn State should be playing their backups like halfway through the third. It shouldn't be close. Um, and not only does that give you rest coming off a bye, but you don't really need a scheme around UMass. You got two, three weeks to have a game plan for Ohio State. This schedule worked out awesome for Penn State. At least that part of it did. Um, Penn State's playing really some really good football right now. They're one of, I think, three teams in the entire nation to have covered every spread. They're undefeated against the spread. I think one of those other teams is UNLV. So shout out UNLV. They're undefeated against the spread, too. They're not undefeated, period. Obviously, they've lost to Michigan. But Michigan's a tough team. It's a, I did not expect UNLV to beat them. They're playing really good football for UNLV. I'll, I'll give them a ton of credit. Penn State's playing really, some really good football right now. Um, i like to see them play better football heading into a big game against oh, Ohio State next week. But I do like Penn State to win and cover at home.